In the beginning, the earth was without form and void, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. For it is He who created for you all that is in the earth, and He directed Himself to the heaven. And God said, Let there be light. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, and the lesser light to rule the night. He created the heavens and the earth in six periods of time, and the sun and the moon and the stars made subservient by His command. And God said, Let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that hath life, and fowl that may fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven. And God said, Let us make man. So God created man. Male and female He created them. What is always so interesting to me is why the three great traditions of Judaism, Christianity, and Islam are so concerned about questions of origins. You won't find that in the Asian religious traditions. And I think part of it comes from their gradual affirmation of this really very unique concept of a monotheistic God. And the creation story, really, of God creating the world out of nothing, simply speaking His creative word, is a theme that resonates through Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. Adam is created in the Quran out of, out of, out of seed, or sperm, or clay. It's, it's a little bit, it's somewhat indistinct. Uh, God creates Adam more specifically and more I don't know, potentially, and with, with a greater show of power in the Bible. But I think these are sort of inconsequential differences. The, the point is, is made that, that Adam is in, is in the, the form of God. The, the story of Adam and Eve in, in, in the Bible unfolds in a place that's called a garden. Uh, later on, when the Jews become much more sophisticated, much more international, they begin to use the Persian word for garden, which is paradise. It's a loan word from Persian. So Garden of Eden and Paradise are in effect synonyms in, in, in the Jewish understanding of it. By the time one gets to the, of Jesus, Jews have been confirmed in a, in a strong belief in the afterlife, and they, they, they understand the afterlife as a place of going back to the pristine beauty and the pristine innocence of, of Eden. So Paradise becomes a picture of the place of reward in the afterlife. What is very interesting, and I'd say something that uh, Christians have had a difficult time dealing with in looking at Muslim understandings of paradise, is that they tend to be very concrete. It really describes a place of greenery where rivers flow, basically everything you won't find in a desert very easily. It's two conflicting notions. One is that the afterlife, the place of reward in the afterlife is this garden of earthly delights, and the other is it's in some sort of very spiritual place called, quote, heaven. 